So in the last video we changed out the two barrel intake and installed the four barrel and we ran the test on that. Now the next thing in line that I think is the biggest restriction on this engine, the thing that's holding it back the most right now, is probably the camshaft. So before I remove this camshaft out of this engine, I want to take some measurements on it. I want to know what the duration is on the intake, I want to know what the duration is on the exhaust, and I want to know those at 6 thousandths valve lift, and I want to know those at 50 thousandths valve lift. And what I know, once I know what those timing events are, I can figure out the, the overlap too. This engine came out of an 87 Ford F-150 and I am assuming that the camshaft that's in it is the original camshaft. So in 87, the truck still had the flat tappet cam in it. For the time being, I'm going to leave the intake manifold on it and the carburetor on it just so that while I'm doing this stuff I don't have an opportunity to drop stuff down into the valley and into the pan and then have a, a big problem on my hands. So we'll pull the valve cover off, but I will need to, I will have to take the timing cover off and the harmonic damper and all that. I need to put a degree wheel on the crankshaft. So let's do that and then we can move on from there. Alright, so the next thing to do is to get the, the degree wheel mounted on the crankshaft. And then we need to find out where exactly top dead center is. And then if we have it directly at top dead center, then I can uh, put some sort of a point around here someplace. So what I'm gonna have to do to find out where top dead center is, is I've got the number one spark plug out and what I'll do is I'm gonna put in a piston stop there. But I think before I do that I'll go over there and get that uh, an indicator made for this so it'll point at that and I'll I won't have to mess with it when I get to that point. So here's the pointer I made. I just made that using some uh, some TIG welding rod, but if you don't have that, uh, I think a coat hanger wire would probably work for this, and I've just got it fastened back there, and we can bend it and turn it and get it adjusted where we need to once we know where top dead center is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, it's pretty close to the top dead center right now. What I'm going to do before I put the piston stop in is I'm going to back it away from the top dead center. Maybe that much. And this is what my the piston stop looks like. And we're going to put it in over here. Okay, it's 
probably in far enough. Now what we do is we come over here. So now I backed it off that way, so let's go forward with it and see. You want to be, you want to be gentle and careful with this so that you're not going to crash the piston into the piston stop. Okay, so I went right past it, so that means I probably didn't put the piston stop down in far enough. Okay, that's it right there. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah, so that's up against the piston stop now. So what we want to do is mark that. It's at 22. We'll mark that there. Looks like it's about 22-ish. Somewhere in that neighborhood. Now because we've run into it that way, it means we got to go all the way back the other way. To catch it on the other side. From an old test. I should have cleaned those off. But I think I'll be able to find out what I need to know. Okay, and that's up against the piston stop there. What we want to know is the angle that's right in the, we want to know, so there's that angle there and that angle there, we want the angle right in the middle of it. And that angle will be top at center. So the total angles in between is 22 plus 15 and then the middle of that will be the sum of those angles divided by 2 so 18.5 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 and 18 so it would be 18.5 so it's kind of like around in, around in there. So that mark right there is where top dead center is, which is actually pretty close to zero. I got kind of lucky there. So now what I got to do is take the piston stop back out. And now we rotate the engine over. So the indicator is right there on the mark we just made. And then we need to move this over and bend it so that it reads at zero. So now that we got the engine measured at top dead center with this indicator, we can know what crankshaft angle we're at. I want to take these valve springs out and put the checking springs in it, or the checker springs. Okay, so I've got the valve train put back together with the checker springs installed. And I thought I should mention why I installed these light springs in here. And the reason for that is that, well, there's, there's a few reasons for it, but the main reason for me today is that this is a hydraulic lifter camshaft with hydraulic lifters. And, with, and hydraulic lifters bleed down. And with, the, with the, the stiffer springs in there, it'll make them bleed down a lot more quickly than it would with these light springs. 
and if it bleeds down while you're doing your measurements it'll give you it'll cause an error in your measurements so we're at top dead center compression on number one and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start turning this turning the crank over until I'm gonna turn that over until I see six thousand valve six thousandths valve lift here there's advertised duration and then there's duration at 50 thousandths. I think most people when they talk about advertised duration it's usually at like five or six thousandths valve lift so I'm gonna I'm gonna do it at six and because it's on top dead center compression the next stroke is the power stroke so that means that the first one that's gonna open is the exhaust valve which is which is the one I have the indicator on that's the exhaust the exhaust valve starting to open. And now we're at about six thousandths. About six thousandths. So now what we got to do is come back over here. So the valve event that I'm looking for right now is the exhaust valve open angle. It looks like our exhaust valve opens here. I'm going to go record that as 52 degrees before bottom dead center. Okay, so we got six thousandths valve lift now. New exhaust. It looks like. Yeah, so this is 22 degrees after top dead center. I'm gonna go record that as 22. Okay so there's the intake valve opening. The intake valve opening nine degrees before top dead center. And what you can tell between these two line these two angles here is that's what the, the overlap is. I'm gonna go record that as nine degrees. Looks like the intake valve closes about 49 degrees after bottom dead center. I'll go record that. And now what I want to do is the same. I want to measure the same things, only with the valve at 50 thousandths valve lift. I'm going to get a rough estimate on what the exhaust valve lift is. Yeah, it's like 350 thousandths. Now let's do a check on the intake valve lift. Maybe a little less than 380, but I'll go with 380. So I'll go with 380 thousandths lift on the intake side. It's a diagram that you see sometimes, and it can kind of help visualize the timing events. So just this, this circle, imagine that uh, that's top dead center, that's bottom dead center, and that's uh, you know 360 degrees of crankshaft rotation. So the way it works is that the intake valve opens usually opens before top dead center and then the crankshaft turns around down the intake stroke past bottom dead center and then the intake valve actually closes a little bit after bottom dead center when the piston is actually starting to move up a little bit and then the exhaust will open sometime before bottom dead center usually and 
come up through here on the exhaust stroke past top dead center and then it'll close sometime after top dead center and this this angle here between here and here that's your that's how many degrees of overlap you've got we want to know what the duration is on the intake and the exhaust so here's the numbers that we measured the inside ones are at six thousandths and the outside ones are at fifty thousandths and the same over here so what you do to calculate it is you add that to that and then you add 180 to that so for the intake at six thousandths we get nine plus 49 plus 180 so at six thousandths we have a duration of 238 degrees and at 50 thousandths we have negative 8 plus 26 plus 180 and then the one at the 180 that I'm adding in so what we're doing is we're adding this part here to that 180 and then we're adding that part there so that plus that plus that 198 Fifty thousandths. Two hundred and seven. Two seven degrees at fifty thousandths. So the, basically the overlap is this angle here plus that angle there. So the intake valve open plus the exhaust valve close, which is six thousandths, we get thirty-one degrees of overlap. The overlap at fifty thousandths was actually negative. So I'm just going to say it was equals less than zero. So knowing this, it gives me an idea of where I'm starting from and where I'm going to go to with the next camshaft. We'll pick it up next week with a different camshaft and we'll go through this again with the new camshaft. Or the new to me camshaft. It's definitely not new.